here's the basic layout for the first rigging technique of the old school style. You're going to have a top swivel, uh, which the top part would go to your main line. The bottom would have fluorocarbon between that swivel and this top swivel. Um, the bottom of this swivel here is going to connect to the dual lock snap, and the dual lock snap is going to connect to the fluke ball right there. Um, and then this fluke ball is going to snap in on this other anchor cleat, and then the dual lock snap will go to this swivel, and then this swivel will have fluorocarbon connecting out to the hook. So I'm just going to show you the basic knots that I use to tie hook to swivel and swivel to swivel. So let's get started. So to tie my fluorocarbon knots to a swivel or a hook, I use the same technique. Literally take the tip of the fluorocarbon, push it through the eye, maybe run through five, six inches. Hold your fingers at the top there take the loose tag end, wrap it around itself at the top a couple times, maybe two to three times, depending on the thickness. You're going to let go of your right hand, take the loose strap with your right hand. Left hand's going to hold the winding curls that you've created. You're going to take the right loose part and funnel it in the out the same eye hole. And you're going to take the loose strap all the way back as far as you can. You're going to hold these two so it doesn't slip back through the hole. You're going to have some loops at the top there. You can see them there. You're just going to take your fingernail and force those loops back towards the front part of the circle. Grab and pull and peel them back. It's going to make a couple loops and hoops. You can see them right there. Give it a second to recalibrate. You can see it. So you're going to put your finger right there so it can't slide back. You're going to lubricate the line with water or saliva. And then you're literally going to pull down and cinch it tight. Obviously with this thick line, it, it's not going to look as smooth as when you would do it yourself. But you'll have a nice cinch down knot at the tip there. And then obviously you would just trim off your tag. So you do that to the one side, cut it off, run it as, as long as you want. Then you're going to connect it to the top of the fluke ball here. Same technique. Literally funnel it through the hole. Grab it out on the other side. Five, six inches. Wrap it around the uh, back part of the shell there. Funnel it back out the hole that it came. Peel the, uh, peel the line back again and it's going to make a nice basic knot. So then you got your top, you got your bottom. This over here, you could use any, any knot combo, same kind of combo that I just did out here. So I'll show you how I connect it with, uh, to the hook. Literally take this guy here, funnel it through the eye like that, length of, go a little past the length of the hook, and you're basically going to snell it a little bit on the backbone, go around it a couple times, one, two, three, four times, depending on the thickness. You're going to hold what you snelled back, take the loose part, funnel it back up through the eye, like I just did there, pull it all the way through. Hold the two loose pieces here and funnel it, funnel what you created on the backbone there past the eye of the hook. So run it all the way past the eye which you entered. 
going to create that same kind of ripple line. I do this because it has minimal um, wear and tear on the line, as well as it doesn't leave the, the line bruised or, or dinked in any way. I'm going to bring it back. that and cinch it down. As mentioned, it's quite difficult for me to uh, cinch down a 50 pound line. I can pull and pull in as hard as I want. I usually put my finger in the corner there and just help the, uh, the cinch process, but you can see how it, for a 50 pound line, it got semi cinched down. And then I would just click the tag at that point have a good snelled um, hook and then as mentioned you know depending on the length of how far you want to drift it back you would connect the loose end to the other swivel this would go up to your main line and now you got yourself a nice hook that drifts off to the side the only difference between old school technique one and old school technique two is that I just put a dropper looper above so that I have a dropper up top and then it follows it with a trailer down here. You know, here's your dropper looper over here down to this swivel and this um, dual lock snap. So, over here, the hook trails out. Obviously, you would make it more to scale, but for arts and crafts purposes. Here's your upper swivel. You know, coming down, here's your dropper looper, maybe 12 inches before the top of the, you know, the swivel. That connects dual lock snaps to the flute ball. The flute ball would have a trailer of another hook. And if you don't want two hooks on the old school style, just don't create the dropper looper, and then you have a full extension on this guy here where you can just trail it 